Okay guys, good morning. Boy, what a treat I have for you today. Now, basically what it is, is uh, beautiful crepes that are made, but they're very thin. They're not as thick as some of the ones you see uh, out there. Uh, they're like a dessert crepe. These are very thin. You make them very thin. And what you do is you put them in broth. So now, um, I'm going to start off, but we're not going to make a big batch today. We're only going to make a small batch. And I'm going to show you how I make these beautiful crepes that you will just, they're to die for. They're that good. So we're going to start off with, Madonna mia. There we go. We're going to just do one cup of flour. Like I said, this is a small batch. And if you're making it even smaller than this, you can. If you're just making, um, I also make, you're going to see this recipe. They're called fazzolettis. Basically, uh, they're going to be folded and you're going to present one in the plate. Now, this is if you're having a fancy dinner. They're just to die for. They're that good. So, anyhow, if you're making a small batch of this, you don't need a whole cup. You could do half a cup. But I'm going to make one cup worth because my husband loves this stuff so we're not going to go there so we're going to make one cup of flour and we're going to need six tablespoons of chickpea flour one bless you erica two three now my tablespoons are never precise right three four five you know what? We're going to do seven. Lucky seven. There we go. We've got seven tablespoons of chickpea flour. We're going to use... Molly's jumping all over the place. Okay, so here we go. We've got uh, one, maybe two teaspoons of... Or maybe a teaspoon and a half of salt. Remember, it's always better to put less than more. You could always add salt, but you can never remove salt. We're going to put a little bit of egg. Not egg, sorry. Just a little bit of kalamanak. That's the egg salt because normally this is done with egg. And because we're vegan and we don't use egg, we use other stuff that kind of gives you that smell or taste of egg because they are crepes after all. Okay, I'm going to put one tablespoon. It's called the veg. Here it is. I am going to use only one tablespoon of the veg. Now, if you don't have veg, you can replace it with ground flax, but I don't want to see the specks in my uh, in my crepes. I want my crepes to be very plain, so I'm going to put one tablespoon of this. And if you don't have it, you can leave it out. It's not needed, but it does hold your crepe just a little firmer. But really, I've made it without the veg. And it's just as good. Trust me, you don't need the veg if you don't have it. Don't go crazy and say, oh my God, I need to go get the veg. Or the Kalamanak salt. Um, if you don't have that egg salt, don't go crazy. You don't need it because it's going to be just as good, I promise you. Okay, so we're just going to give this a little mix. Now, like I said, this is a big batch because I'm making it for my husband and my daughter. They can never get enough of this. But you don't have to make a big batch like this. If you're just making it for two people, uh, three people, half a cup is more than enough. Because you don't want to eat more than uh, three, four crepes. Because you cut those in half and it becomes six. So, one nice bowl. But if you don't mind having extra, go ahead and make the full cup. Okay, so we're going to need some milk. Now, I find that soy milk works the best for this recipe. So we're going to put two cups of soy milk in this. You can use almond, but I find soy just seems to hold it together a little better. There's two cups of soy milk. Now, you'd like to use a hand wand or a blender. If you're going to do it in the blender, just add all your ingredients right into the blender and then just blend it up really nice. But if you don't have, uh, um, but if you have a hand wand, the way I'm going to do it, you can use a hand wand. So just get, let me get some water. We're going to need at least uh, half to one cup of water, but we're going to check it out first. Okay, we're going to start off with just half a cup first of water. Man, I could smell the egg just with that salt. There we go. 
And we want to put a drizzle of olive oil because you want these to detach. There we go. You want them to detach from the pan. You don't want this to stick them in the pan for you. So we just put like a little drizzle, maybe a tablespoon if you can if you want. Okay, I'm gonna just do this so I don't make you guys go deaf and I'll show you in a minute. Okay, they look about right. Okay, I'm just gonna push this aside. Actually, I'm gonna remove it from there because I'm gonna make a mess on my counter. So, you wanna turn your burner on and you wanna put it uh, first high uh, and then lower it right away to a low. But I just wanna talk to you for a bit, so I'm gonna keep it on low. Uh, maybe a little more oil just to make it easier for me to flip them. And when you make these, you're gonna want to not use the whole uh, ladle. Um, you want these to be thin. If you want them thick, go ahead and make them thick, but you really want them thin. This is still, can you see the, how thick this is still, the batter? We could even loosen it up just a little more. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Like I said, it's easy to add water, but it's not easy to remove water. So we did use almost a whole cup of water, but always keep a little extra water near you because you're going to need it. And you're gonna say, oh my God, there's so much trouble to make these. You know what? It's, they're so good that they're worth every, every little bit. So here we go. It's all in there. So I did use the full cup of water and I'm gonna get just a little bit more reserve to keep next to me and I'm going to um, keep it in case I need it. Okay, second thing you need a very good pan, a non-stick pan, otherwise it will stick on you. Now, the old way, believe it or not, my mom used to have some pork fat and she used to rub it on the pan. And I mean, we don't do this, so don't freak out on me. Uh, but she used to rub that pork fat on the pan and then she used to put her, um, her batter in and she will make her crispellas. Um, we don't use that so that's why we put a little bit of fat right into the batter and we do it on low so it doesn't stick. Now if I could get my daughter here I'm gonna show you what to do. On the table you want a tablecloth because as you make them you're gonna place them on that tablecloth right on your table and they're going to uh, con continue uh, losing its moisture so you do want to put this on a clean tablecloth on your table once they're done so, let's give it a brush if you have some vegan basil you want your pan nice and hot and then there we go you put it in and you give it a whirl there you go it's not a full ladle. You just have to wait till it does its thing and then you're gonna flip it over. And how do you know when they're done? You're gonna see it's gonna get kind of golden around the edge and they're gonna start detaching on their own. You see how it gets easy to flip it, but it's still not ready. You want a nice golden color in the back. And like I said, you do have to keep this on a low heat. Erica, you want to show them the, uh, I have it on a very low, but do get your pan nice and hot first and then bring it down low because you don't want these things to uh, stick on you. And when you can, and you see that it's nice and golden, you slowly lift, pop it over. And you're going to let it cook the other side, but not for long. You'll see that it doesn't take long to cook on the other side. And you want them thin. You don't want these guys thick. If you make them thick, you're just going to have pancake, basically. You want to have a very thin, delicate crepe. And this really takes time to learn. But you know what? If you're worried, make them thicker. 
and they're going to be just as good. Just don't make them too thick. Like I said, they're not pancakes, they're crepes. Check them, not ready yet. And if you, like my sister, my sister, when she makes them, she's got like three or four crepe pans. So she, it takes her no time at all to make them. I unfortunately only have one of these pans and it's not a crepe pan, which I must invest in. It's going to take me a little longer, but I'm just going to show you how it works. And then I'm going to show you what the, um, how I set it as a dish. See how the back side looks? You see, this is done. So I'm going to take it. Right here. And just right on top of there. Okay. And I'm going to put it right onto a clean cloth and it's going to sit there till they're ready. As they cool off, I have paper towels on this side. And you can see I already have some made. And they go right in between some paper towels. If you don't want to use paper towels, just use dish cloth. So this. As they cool off, it goes there, and we cover, uh, we cover the uh, the crepes so we keep them moist. But for now, it's gonna stay there until I'm ready to do more. Make another one. So here we go again. You see, it's not completely full, my ladle. And if I need a little more, here we go. You gotta go quick. There we go. That's even too thick, but they're still good. They're still good. They're going to be good. Trust me, they're going to be good. And when you present this, if you have guests over and you present this dish to your guests, they're going to be in awe. They're going to say, wow, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's going to be one of the best recipes you'll ever make, either for your family or for your guest. It's really, really delicious. Now, how my parents, or how my mom used to make them, she would roll, well actually where she comes from in Italy, they used to um, leave the crepe flat, she used to put grated cheese on top, like all the ones that are cooked, she used to put grated cheese on top and then she'd put another crepe and then more grated cheese and more crepes and she'd make a stack and then they would make a cross in the middle and that's how they used to scoop and they used to serve the, uh, whoop be a little more delicate because they are thin there we go uh, and she used to do them that way but when my father used to come he would take the crepe and he would put grated cheese and they would roll them like cigars then they would get cut in half and you would place stacks of them in your plate and pour broth on top fantastic when I tell you they're fantastic they're fantastic but I'm going to show you how my family likes it, especially Erica. Mm -hmm. She ate a whole bunch today, and she's <laughs> going to eat a whole bunch tonight. I'm going to show you how I make them, and you're going to see how beautiful and how delicious this recipe is. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how, um, how I serve this. I'm going to get a cutting board. Now you can do this ahead of time, and then you just uh, you just put them in place when you're ready, and that you have your broth ready. So I'm just gonna cut some cheese. If you haven't tried my cheese, it's a must. As you can tell, I, I have very little. I ate it all. <laughs> As you can tell, there's very little left. Jeez. Okay, got a boo-boo on my finger. Okay, so it's very easy. You cut some cheese. And this is like my brie cheese. Okay, you're going to take your beautiful crepe. And you're going to place the cheese smack in the middle. And then you're going, you can actually put, where is it? Now, I like cilantro, so that's what I'm going to use, but you don't have to use cilantro. You could use any herb you want. You could put fresh basil if you want. So we're going to flip it over this way, flip it over this way, and then we make a little present. present. 
and we put these aside. And I'm going to make one more because I know my daughter is going to say, can I have one more? So you cut your cheese and any cheese you make is going to be great in here. And if you don't have any made, you can buy any vegan cheese and it's going to work for you. Or you can make raw cheese. If you like raw cheese, uh, you can make some with almonds. Okay, here we go. Flip, flip, flip it over this way, flip it over that way. And there's another present. And I'll show you how this is served. It goes into your plate. You could put one, you could put two. I'm going to put a little bit of basil on top. Cilantro. Uh, sorry, cilantro. Okay, guys, and a little bit of broth on the side. And this is how my daughter likes it. And let me tell you, so will your guest. So, bon appetito, and I'll see you in my next video, guys. <laughs>